Welcome back ladies and gentlemen for another YouTube video all in crypto here and today we are going to be talking about the SEC versus Algorand. Now within the past 24 hours the SEC has officially filed another lawsuit against Kraken. We know this is the second lawsuit that's been brought against Kraken. The first one they actually settled with a 30 million pound settlement back in February but they have brought forward another lawsuit where they've mentioned a number of cryptocurrencies as securities, such as Algorand. And what we're going to do in this video is look at what the lawsuit says in specifics to Algorand. And actually, before we do that, we're going to set the stage and look at prior lawsuits that have been brought against other cryptocurrency exchanges, such as Coinbase, Binance, and Bittrex, that also mention Algorand. And then we're going to be perhaps looking at the kind of contradictory nature of what Gary Gensler has previously said on the space, previously said about Algorand and Silvio, um, and his stance on it at the moment. So strap yourselves in, guys. The best place for us to start is to look at the news that's came forth over the past 24 hours. And that is, today the SEC filed a complaint alleging that Kraken operates as an unregistered national securities exchange broker and clearinghouse. We disagree with their claims and plan to vigorously defend our position. And I do actually believe that they should have defended their position in the first place because the SEC, when they've gone after other companies, they've lost. Grayscale, for example, obviously Ripple, Brad and Chris. And of course, that's resulted in XRP now being officially classified by a Supreme Court judge as a non-security. However, because I believe Kraken capitulated and settled with the SEC, they've seen them as an easy target. But it looks like this time they are not going to roll over. Let's dive in to the law set or lawsuit, sorry. Or in fact, let's start the video off so you can see this is the lawsuit brought forth against Kraken. We'll scroll down to, I believe it's page 15, where they specifically mention Algorand. And we're going to look at the mentioning of Algorand and see what the SEC have to say. But just to sort of set the stage before we do do that, I want to actually dive into prior lawsuits where Algorand was mentioned. Now, we know there was a lawsuit brought forward against Coinbase where Algorand actually wasn't mentioned. However, Sol, Ada, Matic, Filecoin, Sandbox, Axel Infinity, Chili's, Flow, Internet Computer, Near Protocol, um, Voyager, Dash, and Nexos were all listed. But in the Binance lawsuit, Algorand was actually, or sorry, this is the Bittrex lawsuit. Algorand was actually specifically mentioned Algorand is a blockchain protocol founded by Silvio Macali. The Algorand blockchain, it goes in to explain what it is and why they believe it's a security. And you can also see that it was mentioned in the Binance lawsuit, which went a lot more into Binance as a company, BAM trading and other things like that. But Algorand's been pretty unlucky in regards to its mentioning in Binance, Bittrex, and now Kraken's lawsuit for the second time around. Now, Gary Gensler used to actually work with Silvio Macaulay. And I'm going to leave a link to this video in the description because this is Gary Gensler talking about the revolutionary nature of blockchain technology in the crypto space. And he talks about it, and this is only from four years ago, guys, in a very positive light. You've got to remember that Gary Gensler came over to the SEC having taught about nothing else other than cryptocurrencies at MIT, where Silvio was actually working and is uh, a part of. I think Algorand actually have a partnership with MIT. Um, so there's a little bit of sort of confusion, I think, about that. But let's not dive too much into that confusion. Let's actually focus on the lawsuit that's been brought forth today. Um, and actually, we also know that BlackRock filed for a spot Ethereum ETF, which means they must think that Ethereum is not a security. And there's this whole kind of ETHgate thing going around where Hinman essentially said Ethereum doesn't need to register as a security, who was a former higher up at the SEC. There's kind of documents on it. But if Ethereum doesn't need to register as a security for the reasons that they stated, and it's one thing that was brought up by Ripple in their um, court case, and that means Ripple doesn't, many of these other cryptocurrencies don't like Algorand. However, before I go any further, guys, it's very important for me to say that I am not a securities lawyer. I have no legal background or uh, training certainly within the United States. So I'm not the be all and end all on this matter, just somebody who's reporting on it as we see it coming. So this took place yesterday. 
You can see if we scroll down to page 15, it says many of the crypto assets available through Kraken are securities. Throughout the relevant period, Kraken has made available for trading many crypto asset securities. These crypto asset securities are investment contracts represented by the underlying crypto asset. If Kraken in fact, Kraken currently makes available for trading assets that have been subject to prior SEC enforcement actions based upon their status as crypto asset securities, including crypto asset trading under the symbols ADA, AXS, which is Axe Infinity, Algorand yet again, Atom, Chili's, Coty, Dash, Filecoin, Flow Network, ICP, Internet Computer, Decentraland, Polygon, Near Protocol, Amiseiko, Sandbox and Solana, um, which were alleged in one or more of the following actions against other unregistered intermediaries. Of course, you've got Bittrex, um, you've got Binance Holdings, and you've got Coinbase, which we've just previously looked at. Let's go down to what they have to say in regards to Algorand. So Ada's number one, and then the second one, of course, is Algorand. So Algo, Algorand is a blockchain protocol founded by Silverman Mikali. The Algorand blockchain uses a consensus algorithm it calls pure proof of stake. A genius algorithm, by the way, if I do say so myself, in which each user's ability to influence the choice of a new block proportional to its stake number of tokens in the system. It's a very revolutionary concept using randomness as a security feature. You know, how can you attack something that's random? And if it's sufficiently decentralized, you know, it makes it almost impossible. So Algo is the native token of the Algorand blockchain and has a maximum supply of 10 billion. Algo minted at the launch of the Algorand network. Because Algo is the native token of the Algorand blockchain, those utilizing the Algorand blockchain need to hold and potentially stake a certain amount of Algo. From the time of its offerings and continuing through the relevant period, Algo was offered and sold as an investment contract and is therefore a security. This is insane what they're saying here. I, I, I never bought Algorand as an investment contract. I bought it as a part of a cryptocurrency, a part of that the fabrics of it. You know, Algorand, without Algorand, Algorand is used to pay the fees. It's used to secure the network. It's not necessarily there as a beneficiary of the network. It's there as a part of the network. And this is where I think the SEC is slightly missing the mark. So the price of all algo tokens goes up or or down together. Wow, unbelievable. The Algorand Foundation Limited conducted an initial algo token sale on or around June the 19th, 2019 selling 25 million tokens at $2.40 per algo, raising approximately $60 million. In advance of the token sales, the Algorand Foundation promoted the token sales on Twitter and included a link to its website. The Algorand Foundation promoted the June 19th, 2019 token sale in part with a refund policy that allows algo investors to return the algo to the Algorand Foundation one year later at 90% of the original purchase price. The Algorand Foundation explained the economic rationale behind the refund policy by noting its own belief in and commitment to the value of Algo, stating, we believe in the underlying value of the Algorand blockchain, the Algo and the potential of borderless economies. Our goal is to invest in the growth, sustainability and performance of that economy. So you can see with the Howey test, what they're trying to do here, they're trying to basically say that anybody that's buying Algorand is profiting from the um, um, Algorand Foundation's work, basically, and they're the central entity here. However, we know that blockchains really have, and this is why Bitcoin has never been labeled a security, because there's no, there's no central point there. Uh, whereas what I think often the SEC failed to understand is it's not just the Algorand Foundation working on this project. There's no one central. There might be a more dominant player, but anybody building a DAP, anybody doing anything on Algorand is essentially working to facilitate the uh, enrichment of the Algorand network and thus potentially the Algorand token, I guess. So in promoting the Algorand token sale, the Algorand Foundation tied the potential growth of the Algorand blockchain to potential demand for the Algo token itself. 
and on its own commitment to preserving a price floor for Algorand. In or around August 2019, the Algorand Foundation publicly offered Algo investors an early refund opportunity and Algo investors returned a total of approximately 20 million Algo tokens to the foundation, to the Algorand Foundation, in exchange for a refund that was 85% of the original purchase price. In or around June 2020, Algo investors who did not return their Algo tokens on August 2019 were publicly offered a second refund window. Algo investors returned a total of approximately 5 million Algo tokens for a refund of 90% of the original purchase price. Through its reward program and incentive structure, the Algorand Foundation continued distributing tokens after June 2019. Token sale. As of September 2022, approximately 6.9 billion Algo were in circulation. Today, Algo is available for buying, selling and trading on crypto assets trading platforms in exchange for fiat currencies or certain crypto assets, including Bitcoin. Kraken made Algo available for buying, selling and trading on the Kraken platform and through the Kraken services in January 2022. From the time of its offering, let's scroll up a little bit. From the time of its offerings and continuing through the relevant period, Algo was offered and sold on the Kraken trading platform and through the Kraken services as an investment contract and therefore a security. I don't know how they've come to this conclusion. You can not really give it even much merit to the fact that they're saying the Algorand Foundation sold it as an investment contract. The when you buy a stock, you're buying a piece of a company. When you're buying Algorand, you're not buying the Algorand Foundation. You're buying a network. You're buying technology, basically. Um, I think there's a difference there in, in my own view. So today, two entities are responsible for Algorand. I don't agree with this. The Algorand Foundation, an organization purportedly focused on Algorand protocol governance token dynamics and supporting grassroots open source development on the Algorand ecosystem, which was incorporated in Singapore and Algorand Incorporated, a company purportedly focused on layer one development of the Algorand protocol and enabling enterprise adoption of Algorand uh, blockchain technologies. The Algorand Foundation and Algorand Incorporated purportedly collaborate on projects and in set initiatives for the Algorand community. Let's scroll down. Shortly before the June 19th, 2019 Algo token sale, Steve Kokinos, <laughs> the CEO of Algorand Incorporated, posted a publicly available article stating, we will be holding our founders tokens for a long term and will not be selling them. We will use our founders tokens to participate in consensus and assist in securing the network, though we will never represent more than 50, 49% of the voting. We will use our founders tokens to support the ecosystem and encourage development. The Algon Foundation purportedly owns 50 million Algo tokens and the participation and governance rewards associated with the tokens. Also, members of the Algorand Foundation's Boards of Directors and its Advisory Committee receive Algo as compensation. So th th this is very much similar to the XRP lawsuit. Anybody that's familiar with the Ripple, Brad and Chris lawsuit, they're accusing Algorand and the Algorand Foundation of basically being and, and playing the role of, of, of Ripple, Brad and Chris. Um, and we know that that lawsuit was actually thrown out. So... We'll see. It's very interesting that Gary also has a kind of connection with Silvio, yet he's coming after it so maliciously. In addition to the tokens it owns, as of September 2022, the Algorand Foundation also controls over 3 billion Algo tokens in wallets publicly identified as for community and governance rewards, ecosystem support and the foundation endowment. Signaling to the public that the Algorand Foundation would use Algo tokens to support Algo's economy or ecosystem as well as to reward itself and participants in the ecosystem. The information publicly disseminated by Algorand Incorporated and the Algorand Foundation would lead a responsible investor, including those who purchased Algo since January 2022, to view Algo as an investment. 
Specifically, investors would reasonably expect to profit from holding Algo based on the efforts of the groups to grow the Algorand blockchain and the technologies associated with it because this growth would in turn increase demand for the value of Algo. In a public statement on Twitter, as well as on their respective website, Algorand Incorporated and the Algorand Foundation promote the Algorand protocol. Until approximately May 14th, 2022, the Algorand Foundation promoted that Algorand investors could uh, receive participation rewards, purportedly a form of staking by delegation. So this is proof of stake. I don't know why they have to complicate it so much like this. And also the governance, you, you got incentivized to partake in it. I don't see anything, you know, particularly wrong with that. By participating in the Algorand ecosystem via holding Algo in an online wallet, I'm not sure they know what they're talking about there. As of approximately May the 14th, 2022, the Algorand Foundation publicly stated that it would replace the participation rewards that Algo holders were entitled to receive with so-called governance rewards. The Algorand Foundation described governance as a way for investors to make investment returns on their Algorand purchase, stating it is a decentralized program which allows Algo holders to vote on the future of Algorand and the best way to earn rewards for holding Algorand. Okay, maybe that's a little bit more like the first thing with APYs of 10 to 14%, see in previous periods. Um, the Algorand Incorporated and Algorand Foundation website touts their team's technical experience and expertise in areas of cryptography and business development. For example, Algorand Incorporated's website, Blended Technology, Mastery and Professional Stability. The Algorand team consists of internationally recognized researchers, mathematicians, cryptographers, and economists, along with proven business leaders from global technology companies. In March 2022 report, the Algorand Foundation publicly states that it had started a new program to incentivize the growth of the ecosystem, which is the fundamental need of maturing blockchain. Uh, the program includes a series of loans to help the growth of DeFi networks and to expand the institutional investment in the ecosystem. The Algorand ecosystem team facilitates the development and growth of the ecosystem and developer pipeline, including undiluted funding, technical onboarding and standardization uh, conventions for ASA wallets. So Algorand, that just sounds for an Algorand standard asset. Wallets and AMV. So the Algorand Virtual Machine. Algorand Incorporated and the Algorand Foundation also take steps to incentivize third parties to participate in and attract users to the Algorand protocol. For example, in or around February 2022, the Algorand Foundation announced a $10 million incentives for developers that could make the Algorand blockchain compatible with applications built on Ethereum. So we're talking about an EVM sidechain. Also, in and around February 2022, the Algorand Foundation announced a section of its website called the Algo Hub, a virtual community designed to grow pipelines of the Algorand developments. These statements led reasonable Algo investors through the relevant periods to expect that the demand for Algorand would likely increase based on Algorand Incorporates and Algorand Foundation's efforts to increase the demand. It then goes on to say Algorand technologies thereby resulting in a price increase for Algorand. Public statements made by Kraken to investors about Algo and Algorand blockchain reinforce investors' reasonable expectations of profit from an investment in Algorand due to the managerial efforts of the Algorand uh, Incorporated and the Algorand Foundation. So that is everything that the SEC have to say about Algorand. They're essentially saying that because of the Algorand Foundation being behind some of the efforts to grow Algorand that it constitutes as an investment contract because of these two entities that are essentially behind, um, they're saying are behind Algorand. Now, I don't think that's quite the case. I think that there's lots of different people contributing to Algorand. However, again, I'm not a securities lawyer. Um, this is very much the same thing that they've reissued in the other lawsuits for this one. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section, guys. What do you think about all this? Um, it very much sounds along the similar sort of case that was brought forward against Ripple, Brad and Chris. And we know how that one resulted. 
let's see if there's any kind of a fight back. You know, they haven't, although they've mentioned Algorand in these lawsuits against exchanges, they haven't actually brought any lawsuits against the Algorand Foundation, Silvio or Algorand Incorporated. So I'm not sure what that means, but we'll see how this progresses and we'll be sure to keep you up to date on it. Last little thing I want to cover is actually in the recent uh, filing from BlackRock in regards to their Bitcoin trust. It says researching and investing resources into private or permissionless smart contract platforms rather than open platforms like Bitcoin network competition for the emergence or growth of alternative digital assets and smart contract platforms such as Ethereum, Solana, Avalanche, Polkadot or Cardano could have a negative impact on the demand for and the price of Bitcoin and thereby adversely affect the value of the shares. So is Gary working for the, you know, I don't know. Um, I don't want to speculate too much, but that's the recent lawsuit, the history of how many other times Algorand's been brought up. And the last thing to really do is to ask you guys to share your comments in the comment section. And on that note, I'm going to love and leave you. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one.